here's something I'm discovering. Well, a repeated lesson, really. Satan likes to plant a thought in our mind. From that thought, he uses our weaknesses. He uses our insecurities. He uses our fears. He directs the thought to those things. Those areas in our life that we don't want to deal with or that we refuse to crucify that are operating in, a, in, a, in our flesh. Not sin, just areas that we need to kill by the spirit. And so what he does is he, he takes those thoughts and he plants them and he plants them in an area where we're weak at, where we have fear, where we have um, unbelief, those just all those areas. And then he keeps shooting those darts. How come? Because we don't take those thoughts captive. We don't line them up with scripture and we allow those things to continue to fester within us and we subconsciously suppress them so that the enemy tries to get, uses those to try to get a foothold in our lives. So here's what God is saying. We need to kill our flesh. Huh. We have way, way, way too much um, time with the enemy in our minds and we're not combating him with the word enough. We're not killing our flesh and making our flesh subject and line up to the spirit of God. So now the enemy has a playground. Huh. He has a playground in our mind. He has a playground in our heart. He has a playground and he's using us as a playing field using our fears, using our inhibitions, using all those things, those things that are warring in our flesh. You know, somebody put a curse on you. Somebody said a word to you. Somebody offended you. Somebody overlooked you. Somebody didn't like you. Somebody said something about you. And so all these things that we haven't killed off in our flesh. And so, you know, we think that that's going to cause us to um, survive if we just, you know, ignore it. We can't ignore it. Let me tell you what happens. I ignored something that I knew bothered me. And I thought I had dealt with it, but I really hadn't. You know how you suppress those things? And look what happened. So the other week, somebody did something that hit that, that special nerve that I hadn't killed yet. And it made that thing come alive again. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, it's your undealt with offense. I said, what? Undealt with? He said, yeah. He said, you didn't deal with it. What you did was suppress it, but you weren't honest enough to deal with it, to face it, to confront it, to denounce it, to forgive, to overlook to give the same grace and mercy that you need. So, you know, life is lessons. We have to continually learn lessons. And some lessons we learn again because we refuse to do what was needed to do the first time. So as we close out this year, don't end it with the same stuff you entered in with. You know, really it's a great time to do a consecration. It's a great time to fast and pray. It's a great time to examine ourselves by the mirror of the word so that we can see where we're falling short. You know, we spend so much time examining everybody else, looking at everybody else's life, uh, seeing uh, who should have done, should have done whatever, but we don't spend enough time looking in the mirror of the word to examine us looking at our own motives, what drives us, what hurts us, where are we weak at, where do we need to be stronger, how can we be unoffendable, how can we operate in greater faith, uh, greater levels of faith, uh, how can we increase the level of anointing we walk in, uh, how can we be all that God is calling us to be, how can we forgive like Jesus uh, who was on the cross dying, uh, and here come the hecklers and the mockers, those that have put him on the cross, and he said, Father, forgive them because they don't understand what they're doing. How, how can we be like him and not worry about them? I pray this year that the church as a whole would change its focus 
that we would get out of our insecurities and our fears and overcome what we think about people think about us and what they say about us and what, who cares? God loves you. And if God, hey, God, on 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 Oh, and if God is for us and if God loves us, what does it really matter what anybody else thinks or says? We have to become more confident in that love, more assured in that love, and we have to rest in that love. God bless you, and I'll talk to you again soon.